some of the research uh, that, I, that I'm doing sort of lies at the intersection of uh, traditional electrical engineering as well as neuroscience. Involves um, recording uh, signals non-invasively from the brain by recording uh, voltages or, or uh, signals at the, at the exterior of your head and taking those signals and, and creating scenarios whereby um, we can do uh, uh, signal processing or other types of techniques to, to in some sense decipher your underlying intent. When I got here to campus I uh, decided to, to do some of the traditional research that I've already been working on but to take somewhat of a risk and try to work on a project that you know is, is really wed to both neuroscience and engineering. So this little cap has a bunch of sensors on it, and these little sensors are basically sensing the electrical, electrical activity across different areas of your brain. And so some of them are in the vicinity, for example, the motor cortex and di different areas of the brain. And what's well known is that um, the patterns of those signals change depending upon your intent. So uh, uh, as an electrical engineer, that's basically all I need to know. I want to emphasize that none of this would be possible if it was not for my uh, collaborators, uh, especially uh, Tim Brettel in aerospace engineering and Ed Macklin uh, at the Beckman Institute in the Department of Psychology. We've been working on these pro problems for over, uh, over three years, just thinking about the right way to conceptualize the problems. And by wedding all of our unique viewpoints together, signals and communication over noisy channels, robotics and control, as well as psychology and underlying neuroscience, we've developed uh, what, what we think is a, is a unique perspective on how on, on attempting to enable brain-machine interfaces. One of the uh, co contributions that uh, uh, our group has, has enabled that we think is, uh, is, is important is the appropriate use of how you deliver feedback. For example, um, suppose that you're thinking of a number between 1 and 20. And uh, I get to ask you uh, one question, and you give me a yes or no response. So a smart thing for me to do, if all the numbers are equally likely, is for me to first ask you, is the number less than 10 or is it greater than 10? And based upon that, you say yes or no, and then I hone in again, and you say, okay, is the number less than 5 or greater than 5? And basically what we're asking you is the sentence that you care about, does it come before the sentence I'm, I'm displaying on the screen, or does it come after it? So it turns out that all sentences can be sort of ordered. Imagine we could order the set of all sentences. And so we ask the user a binary question. Does the sentence that you care about, does it come before the sentence we show on the screen, or does it come afterwards? This has uh, uh, potential for scenarios where a user has a lost motor function, yet they're uh, their, uh, their brain is still intact and we can uh, um, sort of um, take the signals that normally get routed from the brain to the muscles and acquire them right from the brain and then use them to allow someone to do tasks that they might not be able to do otherwise. If it's your objective to, um, to type a letter to your mom, then we should think about our performance objective accordingly. We want to make sure that you can uh, spell out this sentence with your thoughts as fast as possible. Tim and some of his students in the aerospace engineering department have taken it one step further and have taken these signal processing algorithms and everything that we've developed and used them to actually control a remote control airplane flying over, over Champagne. This is just the tip of the iceberg. My name is uh, uh, Todd Coleman. I'm an assistant professor in uh, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering and uh, also affiliated with the Neuroscience Program. Thank you.